More vision, more life. It's Motivation Friday. What up, my people? This is Joe Chege, as you all know by now. And this is our Motivation Friday segment. And today, I just want to inspire you guys with a story of a superhero. Like, I know we used to reading about superheroes in books or hearing about all these legendary stories. But today I want to share a story about a real superhero to me because it's someone I've been following for a minute and his story has always inspired me. Every time I hear it or every time I read about him, I'm always inspired because of how circumstance made him to actually create something that has been able to impact a whole community it's a story about dedication it's a story about innovation it's a story of resilience and a story about someone who was willing to keep pushing keep working on his dream even in the midst of all the obstacle that he faced so i'll be diving in and telling you the great story about mr luis soriano aka the bibli oburo professor so join me on this journey as i break it down to you why he's so inspiring and why i thought it was fitting for him to grace our motivation friday and hopefully you will be inspired with his journey so i remember a few years back i caught i think it was a mini documentary on al jazeera and they brought this show about a teacher um uh, in colombia i'm um, korea he, they brought a story about a teacher in colombia who was actually helping his community the kids in his community get access to books so it might sound like a, a regular story uh but for me the story of luis oriano and the biblio buro Uh, which translate to the donkey library was a real fascinating story for me uh it actually inspired me in many ways and kind of like push me to also want to activate or kickstart an initiative that would later on be a blessing to my community but that's a story for another day today i just want to talk about the superhero that's actually changing life and he's been doing it for the past 24 years some of you guys might have heard the story but for those who haven't heard about uh, the biblio buro i just want to take time to break it down so the story goes that in 19 i guess 1997 um luis was a teacher and he saw the need to impact or empower the kids in his village or in his community because the community was predominantly i would say farmers based on the story and because of the location and the positioning of the community they didn't have easy access to like roads proper roads and stuff and it wasn't easy even for the community to get access to books that would actually impact and change the kids life so he took it upon himself to use whatever little resources he had to implement a project or come up with a solution to be able to solve uh, the literacy issue in the community Why do I say he's a superhero? You know how they normally say necessity is the mother of invention? 
I believe sometimes when you push to the wall, we always come up, come up with like crazy ideas that actually transform and impact and more like disruptors of, of the system or of the community. So he took upon himself to use what was available to him. And the story goes that he was actually, initially, he was trained to become a teacher by a professor who used to visit the village. And being able to see how the knowledge that impacted him through the resources that the professor uh, shared with him and how he was able to, to graduate and become a teacher, I guess that planted a seed for him to actually initiate something to be able to kind of like empower the, the younger generation and be able to uplift their lives and be able to to share the gems of knowledge that he learned to be able to, to, to put them on the next level. So he took the minimum resources he had. He had two donkeys. One was named Alpha and the other one is named Beta. You combine them, you already know that's the alphabet. And what he did was create like saddles to be able to carry books. So he took a simple plan, had a few books. I guess he actually, from the story, he started with almost like 70 books. So he took the 70 books, created a nice saddle on the on that, that he would put on the donkeys and be able to strap the books nicely, had his uh, little stack of books and a signboard. And he took it upon himself to visit the different communities in the area. The terrain was crazy because it's mountains and rivers like you have to go up and down. And the only thing that had easy access were to the area was the donkeys. So you can imagine he sacrificed his time and energy to do all this without even being paid by anybody. This was just a commitment. This was something that was passionate in him. And I guess he sat down and looked at the community and decided he wasn't going to wait for change to come from outside. He was going to start to create or impact the community from within. He took it upon himself to start something to be able to empower, to be able to uplift, to be able to transform the future generation with the minimum resources he had. I'm saying this to say that sometimes in our lives, we want to work on our vision. We want to work on, we want to come up with, a, with, a, with an idea or a solution to a problem that our community is facing. And we limit ourselves because we, we, we expect that we're only going to be able to implement it if we have enough resources. But guess what? Out of his frustration of the way this education system was set up, he w- had to actually step out of his comfort zone to come up with a plan that he was able to actually use the minimum resources that he had. So the most important thing that he did was kickstart. He just had to start with whatever minimum resources that he had. And it's an inspiring story because you can imagine him every single time he had an opportunity to visit the villages, he would he would ride the donkeys miles and miles to different communities. Sometimes it took him days. And even his families were worried at some point because it's not like the communities were safe. They, they had like some, 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 I would say like conflicts uh, around the community. So sometimes he would find himself in the middle of the conflicts and it was a risky journey. But because his vision was bigger than the obstacles before him, he didn't give up. So mind you thinking, think of it that you have only two donkeys, that's the resources you have, you use the min, you, you have a couple of books, trap them, and you're on a journey every single day, you're not getting paid for it, to do that, you're not being sponsored by anybody, you're doing it because you're passionate about the education system. Sometimes when you're passionate about something and you have the, the conviction and you, you, you have a picture of, I, I would say, like a, a vision of how things can thrive because of the, the solution that you're about to bring the, to the community or to the people around you. You don't care about what's ahead of you. All you need to do is keep on pushing. So his story is so inspiring because, because of what he was doing. He started networking uh, with people from from different aspects of the community, and the story goes that one time 
uh, he decided to i guess reach out to a radio presenter who through the the the, the, the i guess it's, it was a radio program and he was able to reach out to a journalist and through the collaboration he was actually able to they were actually able to get donations of over almost 4800 books so you can imagine from a batch of only like 70 books now he had a whole heap load of books that now meant that the kids would have more access to more resources But I want to encourage you and tell you he wouldn't have gotten to the 400 uh, 4800 books if he didn't have started with whatever little he had. So his first idea was kickstart kickstart this initiative with the little the, with the little resources that I have because at the end of the day his main goal was to make sure the kids in his community were empowered. He was breaking a generational I would say obstacle of not having the right resources making sure that the kids in his community were empowered with i would say resources that maybe he himself was not able to get while he was growing up so he took it upon himself he didn't wait for the government he didn't wait for the politicians in his region he didn't wait but he took the initiative so every time i i think about his journey and along the way he actually ended up losing one of his feet because of an accident that happened while he was riding one of while he was riding the donkey i guess uh, he had a minor accident and actually lost one of one of his uh, of his foot but that did not even change him or change his purpose or his journey after recuperating he still went back to doing it because for him that's his passion that's his vision that's the seed that he planted and he has actually seen the rewards that actually came out of it so doing it for almost for all that's i guess this by now it's 24 years that's dedication that's passion right there that's someone who's willing to go above and beyond to make sure the future generations are set So this is just a, 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 a I would say like a, a motivation to all of us working on our dreams a motivation to all of us working on our projects to, enable, to to be able to impact the communities to be able to uplift our families to be able to shift uh, the mindset of the people around us to be able to unlearn and relearn and come up with strategies that are going to be able to uplift the people around us and also our families with the dedication of Mr. Luis with that type of mindset with that type of discipline with the staying power like the will power to be able to keep on pushing no matter the situation you're in to keep on pushing no matter the obstacles that you're forcing, you're facing in life because you know you get a fulfillment by being able to uplift other people It's the each one teach one mentality where I know if I teach the next person what I know and they're able to teach the other person the world is going to be a better uh, place tomorrow. He dedicated his time and energy without expecting anything in return. So sometimes we have to serve and that's why I always tell uh, even my friends and people around me You don't have to be motivated by the money part but you have to be hungry to be able to push your dreams and aspirations. You have to believe in your vision. You have to believe in your idea. Sometimes you know you might share your ideas you have these crazy great ideas but if you share it with people who uh don't really see it, they might think you're crazy. But you know what? Let them think you're crazy but keep on doing it keep on creating keep on uh reinventing yourself and becoming the best version of yourself because at the end of the day you'll be able to impact a whole community like the way Mr. Louis has done so i'm taking this day to just salute him for being a superhero for the community in Colombia i just want to salute him for what he's been doing and what he continues to do and i know there thousands of kids who've been impacted by him 
And I believe that they're also going to be able to impact others through what they learn from him. And it's a great story because as time goes by, he was actually able to build a huge library next to his home to be able to 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 to, to be able to keep uh, the books and the donations that he was getting. And that means growth for the community. So this is an inspiring story. We have a ton of stories that can inspire you and uplift you. But today I chose this because this speaks volume to me because I grew up in a situation where we didn't have access to a ton of resources that other people have. Being uh, born in a third world country in East Africa and then migrating to the U.S. and being able to see the ton of resources that people have and are not actually utilizing it or they're not actually using the resources that they have to the fullest. It's sad because at the end of the day, I imagine like there are kids out there who actually wish they had a book. There are kids out there who actually wish they had access to resources that would enable them to become better and greater. So as we continue this journey of ownership and greatness, I'm going to keep on highlighting stories of superheroes, legends that are actually transforming lives, unsung heroes. They don't, you don't hear them being mentioned in, in, in primetime media and all that, but in reality, they're doing so much with so little. So this Friday, I'm taking my time to salute i'm taking my time to give mr louise his flowers while he's still here for the uh, i would say the great work that he has done with the biblio Buro project the donkey library is the first of a kind that's the first ever donkey library in the world so he's already in my, in my books he's top at the top like he's up there and his, his mindset, his dedication, and his desire to be able to uplift and empower the people in his community. Phew. That's great. For me, that's that's inspirational. And I hope you, you, you're able to be inspired and you're able to be uh, motivated by his story. So this Motivation Friday, we salute Mr. Luis Soriano and his effort and all the stuff that he's doing and you guys can go check him out just uh check him out on social media or on, on google you can search his name uh luis oriana or the biblio Buro, the biblio Buro, the donkey library and you'll be able to 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 dive in and get to know him more get to know his story and hopefully it will inspire you to continue working on your dream continue working on the vision that you have with the limited resources that you have, and in due time, you're going to reap your reward. So once again, I'm your host, Joe Chege. It's been Motivation Friday. Hope you guys have an amazing weekend ahead, an amazing uh, amazing Friday. Be blessed. Love you guys. And stay tuned for more of this. Bless up.